Are you looking to move to Boise, Idaho, but you want to look into other cities and you've stumbled across Middleton, Idaho? This video is for you. I'm going to cut it short for you right here. If you can handle 15 minute drives to Costco and Target and the likes, and you don't mind having good schools five minutes away, this place is a gem, a little secluded, but really 15 minutes is all that bad. Let's take a look. Candid response when people ask about the pros and cons of living in Middleton, Idaho. Pros of Middleton, Idaho. Small town. Conservative. Space. Open air. Parks. Hawthorne Park. Foot Park. That one's an actual legit good park. Piccadilly Park. Davis Park. Probably my favorite park of it all. Tiny little, <laughs> tiny little thing. <laughs> um, it's actually embarrassing to even mention it. <laughs> Roadside Park. Ed Payne Park, Greater Middleton Park, Middleton Place Park, Centennial Grove Park, and the Boise River Access. Now some of those parks are really just kind of green space that no one really goes to, but some of those like Foot Park are legit big parks. When we talk about the pros of Middleton, Idaho, I actually had a conversation this morning with my friend. We were talking about high school basketball. He said the first time he ever went to a basketball game was a district championship game at Middleton High. It was a few years ago, and it was during the COVID times, and the private school from Boise is a 4A school, Catholic school, comes into town, and they are playing us. They're all socially distanced, masked up, a little bit on the quieter side. And you've got the Middleton folks scrunched in there, full student body, cheering, no masks, and we're just looking at having a good time and cheering on our team. That's the difference. We're a little bit more conservative, a little bit more laid back. And so if that's what kind of fits you, Middleton, Idaho is just that. Cons of Middleton, Idaho, it's a little further out, and you're not going to find the, any big box stores here. You have a grocery store, you have one stoplight, we have plenty of Mexican restaurants, we have two taco shops and another, we have a burger place, we have Jack in the Box, we have Dairy Queen coming soon, and we have a tractor supply, like that's kind of it. When it comes to the gray outdoors, we don't have a beach, but we do have rivers, we have the Boise River, I mean, it's beautiful, I like it here. Like I said, everything's 15, 20 minutes away. Barring that there's no wreck on the freeway, everything is close. When you live in Eagle, I mean, you're still 10 minutes away from everything, 20 minutes away from everything with traffic, especially if you hit a four o'clock to six o'clock traffic heading up Eagle Road. You might be closer as the crow flies, but really the time spent in the car might be less out here in Middleton, Idaho because of less traffic. One con that actually truly does bug me about Middleton is the lack of east to west roads. Everybody uses Main Street. You have to go two miles north of Main Street to get the next through road that goes all the way through, and that's Purple Sage. Otherwise, Foothill doesn't go all the way through. Willis doesn't go all the way through. Nothing on the south end of that road goes all the way through. And so there's a lot of traffic in that school pickup time along that road. That would be a legit con. Here's the real cost of living to living in Middleton, Idaho. Across the Treasure Valley, you're going to find pros and cons with HOAs. There are less HOAs, so to speak, in Middleton. Like, I live in an HOA. There's $100 a year. No one knows who the president is. No one keeps track of anything like that. So, like, you have some HOAs set up. CCNRs aren't really enforced. That's how a lot of the acreage properties are around here. If you get into the subdivisions where they're kind of track homes or subdivision homes, yeah, you'll have your HOAs, your CCNRs. It's enforced. you got letters from HOA presidents, all that type of stuff. But when you get into the acreages sprawled out, this is probably as good as it gets. Water rights is a huge pro in Idaho. I think I've explained this to many of you, but the water basically comes from Lucky Peak, gets distributed through the rivers and the canals, and those go all over, and then the subdivisions get water rights when they install their subdivisions, so you can water your lawns for free off the HOA dues, and you can keep your lawn green for all the warm days there are throughout the year. Cons would be affordability. Now, I wouldn't call Middleton the wealthiest town in the valley. So what that means for us is that housing prices, although less, you know, but because we're a little bit further out, the housing prices are lower. So you're not gonna find a lot of people working in this city. You're gonna find a lot of them commuting to Caldwell, Nampa, even Boise. I've got quite a few friends who work in Boise from Middleton. They don't mind the 35 minute commute. A few data points for you to look at while we talk about the housing in Middleton, Idaho. There were 34 home sales in Middleton that in the last year were more than a million bucks. There were 65 homes that sold with more than an acre and there were 331 homes that were less than an acre. So going by the stats alone, there's a lot more subdivision homes that are being sold. That's a lot of homes and you take a piece of the pie for homes that are over an acre. Talking about Middleton's prices, the median home price in Middleton right around 482. Lowest price home sell in Middleton was 205 and the highest price is 3 million. If you compare that to North Meridian Star and Eagle, those numbers are all lower than each three cities on each three data points. 
When you talk about Middleton's cost of living, is it really any different than Eagle, Idaho, or Boise, Idaho, or Nampa, or Caldwell, Garden City, CUNA, wherever? No, it's the same. You're not gonna be paying more for a gallon of milk or a gallon of gasoline. Yeah, it's gonna vary from one place to another, but I'm gonna call it a marginal difference. Let's talk about the weather in Middleton, Idaho compared to Boise. Now, actually, there's not much to say other than it's usually a few degrees warmer. There's been a couple days this year where it's been a couple degrees colder and we've gotten some more snow than other places. But for the most part, what I've noticed in the year and a half of living here is it's actually one, two, three degrees less than Boise area. I would say our winds are about five miles an hour more because we're on the outskirts of town. Winds come rushing in. I would say one con might be, I feel like it might be a tad bit more windy out here, but I say that and it might have just been last year. We were experiencing a ton of fluctuation in the temperature, so the winds were heavier. Now guys, real quick, if you don't remember who I am, my name is Brian Hymas. If this is your first time with me, welcome. I am a realtor here in the Boise Valley. I was an appraiser before, born and raised in Boise. I love all things Boise, I love all things real estate. And really, I received no greater compliment than a phone call, a text, or an email from you saying you're moving to the Treasure Valley. If you're moving here in the next nine days or nine months, I would love to help you out, provide as much value as I can for you to get here and hit the ground running using the Buying in Boise Blueprint, which really is the best system there is to getting a home, I promise you. I have had so many people rave about how it really simplifies the process for them and doesn't make this whole process a headache. Buying is fun, moving is fun, but there's a lot of anxiety and it takes it out. In fact, this morning I received a text from a gal and she said she would do it with no one else and do it no other way than the buying of Boise Blueprint. And I really appreciate that. It really comes from her heart. It touched me. It's really actually emotional because I do these videos for you guys. And so when it does actually make a difference in someone's lives, it's nice to know that I'm not just selling houses, but I'm actually helping people's lives. Middleton 10 years ago is not the same as Middleton is today for better or for worse. Now we're a 5A school. It's the highest in the state of Idaho this year. It actually changes to 6A next year. So we'll stay at 5A, kind of give you something to go off of there. There is one grocery store in Middleton if you go right outside the boundary of Middleton, there's a nice Albertsons and Star that's on West Star. It's almost East Eagle. That place is being developed really nicely. We've got Jack in the Box. We've got Two Away Burger. We've got Tacos El Rancho size kitchen. It's a subway, but which small town doesn't have a subway? You know what I'm saying? We got Garbanzo's Pizza. We got El Senor Pollo, my fave. We got Poppy's Take and Bake, kind of like the Papa Murphy's. I've been to all those places. I honestly love the small town. And Size Kitchen's pretty cool. It's the it's a guy from Taiwan and his wife, they run it. I've gone to lunch there with a guy who lived in Taiwan for two years and he says it's pretty good. Um, I liked it a lot. They've got all the normal stuff, all your chow mains, your curries, your chickens. I'm sweet and sour, or mandarin, chicken, stuff like that. That's stuff that I kind of gravitate towards. And then the stuff that he was trying was a little bit out there for me, but he was loving it. So, and they can cook it to your spice, right? So it's like a sit down restaurant, but yeah, it's fast in terms of service. And you get to tell them like, cause it's a shorter to cook, right? You're just like, hey, can you make that a little bit less spicy and stuff like that, it's kind of fun. El Senor Pollo, I said it's my favorite. I just love this carne asada street tacos. I just grab three of those every time, chips and salsa, and boom, out the door for like 12 bucks every time. Love it, absolutely love it. I go there multiple times each week. <laughs> Let's just say I, I don't like missing Taco Tuesday. When it comes to hospitals, you've got West Valley, you've got St. Al's, you've got St. Luke's. West Valley is probably the closest, probably 10 or 15 minutes away. That's in Caldwell, not the most robust hospital. In St. Luke's at the Midland exit in Nampa, 15 minutes away, pretty large hospital. Now down the road at Garrity, you have St. Al's. St. Al's is more of a heart and lungs, if I'm not mistaken. Then if you go all the way downtown, 35 minutes to St. Luke's, that's where your NICUs and your big hospital performing things are down in Boise. In between Garrity and downtown, there's one St. Luke's at the Eagle exit. That is in Meridian, and that is a pretty big hospital as well. So when it comes to hospitals, you might not be next door, but you're within 10 minutes and an ambulance ride, you're probably you know 10 minutes away from three hospitals. Are Middleton schools really as bad as niche.com and greatschools.org make them out to be online? I'm here to tell you that they're actually not. I wanna give you my opinion. I've talked to plenty of parents and they love how hands-on the teachers are. Remember, those ratings that come from the niche.com, greatschools.org online are based on class size, national test scores, diversity, things that may or may not intrigue you. And now we talk about freeway access. The freeway access is a huge thing because there's one freeway that really goes from east to west and there's that little connector that hops in downtown. When you talk about Middleton, now where I live, it's awesome. I'm two minutes away from the freeway and I'm 15 minutes from anywhere. You live closer to Middleton Road, you're still 15 minutes from all that main stuff on the Garrity exit. You're still only 15 minutes away from that stuff on the Midland exit. 
because it's a straight shot down Middleton Road to that exit. So while we are tucked away here in Middleton, I love it. I, I just can't rave enough about this place. It fits me so much. So if you vibe with me and you want more of that laid back lifestyle and you're maybe not trying to keep up with the Joneses as much, Middleton's way better. I mean, I don't want to sell you on Middleton over Eagle. Eagle is great. I loved Eagle. I loved how nice and clean and prim and proper it was, but that did come at a cost. It comes at a huge price tag and we wanted to stay in Eagle. So we're a little bit on that verge, but at the same time, I do enjoy the laid back country living of Middleton just a speck more. For example, that basketball game I already referenced, we went to that game last night. It's got a small town feeling of one high school, one town that's come together. And so to each their own, but I really like the Middleton vibe. One con, let's be real, about Middleton is the downtown area. I don't love it. It's kind of a rednecky feel. I was actually at physical therapy. I had a knee injury a year and a half ago, still actually working through that. But I was at physical therapy and the head physical therapist was like, I went to this town in Iowa to watch my sons play soccer. They play collegiate soccer there. It was like D3 or D2 or something. And they're like, you know how some of those small towns have that trashy feel? And, and I'm like, uh, dude, like next door is, is I'm not going to say the business because I don't want to rag on them is blank, blank, blank. I was like, they've got dryers and washers sitting on their sidewalk. I've got like parts of cars hanging out. Like <laughs> it's just the picturesque, you know, Pleasantville. I like it, it's small town, but it's still got some cleanup to do and it'll probably be all cleaned up in 10 or 20 years. When it comes to the pros and cons of Middleton's government, it's still a small town. So that comes with no city planner. That comes with, you know, a lawyer who advises to the council and might have other things going on in his legal life. There are some things that we are just plopping down. Someone wants to get something approved. It seems like the zoning changes and all of a sudden something's approved. However, when we were trying to fight that a neighborhood did not go in behind our houses, which we're fine with growth. We, we understand that I, where I live used to be a farm field too, right? I understand that. I understand growth, but I understand proper growth, at least to a degree. And what they wanted to do was just shove in a bunch of houses and the road is not made for it. The roundabouts aren't made for it. It's right next to school. It's traffic. It's kids crossing streets. And so it actually got denied and they listened to our opinions. The developer seems to listen to no one, but they will listen. There are a lot of things getting approved right now. And that is, again, that's because it's small town city councils and mayors and they are going to approve a lot. I mean, this is a pretty conservative town. Hopefully that paints a picture. Things haven't gotten approved. Things have gotten approved. Zoning changes a lot. Small town city council, very conservative, like it or hate it, that's what it is. A road that can help Middleton is the Chinden Road, which is Highway 2026. That road runs two miles south of the main Highway 44 that goes from Middleton to Star to Eagle. And because of that, it might alleviate some of the traffic. It is going through major construction right now, going from two lanes to four lanes. That will help, but I highlight that just because traffic is a talking point in Middleton, and that is just a little bit of an extra for you to take in. Bonus for you on the pros and cons video here of Middleton, I wanna take you through one property. This beautiful home is built by Blackstone. This one is just a hair under 1.2 million, four beds, three and a half baths. A look here at the living room, panning over to the dining and kitchen. This is a beautiful home. This one is built on two acres. As we head in the master bedroom, notice the wall, the accent wall, it's super awesome. The bed is large. The master bath is truly a delight. Check this out, the bath, the shower, the separate counters, the closet space. This one is a bedroom that connects to a bathroom. It's a Jack and Jill. So meaning the bathroom here that we're in right now with the toilet and shower to the left and the sink to the right, both connect to another bedroom. And there's also another bedroom back here. This one has its own closet, its own ensuite, sink, toilet, shower, tub. We'll head to the three car garage here, checking out the RV bay as well. There's a garage door in there at the back to drive all the way through or take your riding lawnmower all the way through. So here's a look at the two acres we talked about earlier. Very, very nice. I mean, about an acre on this flat part and then the sloping part, probably another acre as well. I did compare Eagle to Middleton in this video just a little bit, but if you want a full comparison, go watch the Eagle versus Middleton video right now. That video is gonna knock your socks off. You're gonna be really one or the other. And Star is kind of the in-between. It Just kind of keep that in mind as I compare Eagle to Middleton. So there's Eagle, Star, Middleton. What Eagle is today, Star will be in 10 years and Middleton will probably be in 20 years. So keep that in mind as you watch these videos. 
Go watch him now and learn all you need to know about Eagle and Middleton. Now guys, I'm born and raised in Boise, Idaho. Having lived in Middleton, Eagle, West Boise, South Meridian, I feel like I've lived in quite a few places in this valley. I know it all. I love Middleton where I'm at right now. I loved Eagle when I was there. If you are looking to move here, whether it's nine days, nine months, I would love to be your guy. There is no greater compliment that I receive than a phone call, a text, an email from you saying that you need help moving here and that you want to get put on the Buying in Boise blueprint. If that's the case, drop me a phone call, a text, or an email, and we will get you started right away. Space. Open air. But I really like Middleton. You're not gonna be paying more for a gallon of bread. <laughs> You're not gonna be paying more for a gallon of milk or a gallon of gasoline. But, you know, with, you know, what I'm, that, at least to a, to a degree. When we look at housing, is it really that, so we already kind of did that, right? So diving more into that housing, that's what I'll say. 